Yep, here I am, back again for another adventure. Uh, today I'm going to go out off the dark and try to get some artificial lighting. Try to get some of that night feel of Norway. Uh, it's quite dark. <clears throat> it's uh, December and we don't really get a lot of extra light. There is some snow that will reflect a little bit, but I'm planning to go for those really black and white contrasts and to do that I have actually chosen to go for this film. Chosen to go for this one. <clears throat> it's a Japan Camera Hunter Street Pan 400 and I have it as a 120 film that indicates that I will shoot it with a camera that is medium format and I'm going to use my Bronica, my Zenza Bronica ETR and I'm going to use a 50 millimeter Zenson on lens. <clears throat> it's actually quite a bright one. This is a good lens. Uh, I like it. Uh, and when I got the camera, this is the only lens I had for it. So I actually know it quite well. Uh, since then, I've also bought myself a 150 millimeter. Uh, and I'm very happy with that one as well. Uh, <clears throat> If I was going to take this down to the uh, to the level of um, 35 mil, uh, it would probably be around 35 mil, maybe. So it's a little wide angle. It's not extreme wide, and it doesn't really distort that much. I like it quite quite well. And if you see my Instagram page, you have probably seen the um, the lonely leaf that was taken with this camera and it was taken with this particular lens. The lens is a 50 millimeter Zensonon, as I said, and it goes from f2.8, so it's quite bright. It's quite a very, actually, very bright lens, and I, it's a very sharp lens as well. It goes all the way up to f22. Today, I'm aiming at shooting at around f8, uh, and I'm aiming to use longer shutter speed, so I will use a cable release for it. Um, <clears throat> and also, I will then stick this film into the camera, which is this one. Japan Camera Hunter Street Pan 400. I've used it one or two times before. Uh, and it's extremely contrasty. Uh, it's very fine grain, and I like the effect it gives. Uh, however, I'm not quite sure if I would buy this one or if we just push a Tri-X, really. Or HP4, uh, HP5+, Plus. actually, I prefer pushing Tri-X. So I will shoot this at eye level, that's why I have the prism viewfinder on. And that means that I will be shooting like this. Uh, I will put it on a tripod and I will use a cable release. But it indicates that I can go actually quite close on this one. And I can focus in on a little bit less than half a meter. So it's a good lens. See you out there.
Yeah, I hope some of that was visible for you, that you got something out of those videos. Uh, the lighting conditions are difficult, that's why I use the equipment I use, and I also use quite long shutter speeds. Uh, I'm not sure about the reciprocity on the JCK uh, street pan, so I had to just go for whatever I can think. Uh, but I will show you some pictures when the time comes. Thanks. So, what did I learn from this video? Or from this outing? Well, first of all, I learned that the JCH street pan is probably not the best idea if you have very, very low lighting conditions. I could have guessed that beforehand, but I thought it was worth the little experiment. Um, my negatives come out very, very thin. I have a few that could work out and that will work out and I will show you those. Uh, but <laughs> in general, I think that my this would not be the film. I should probably have gone for a standard film like a Tri-X or an HP 5 Plus, I have both of them, and I would probably have been better off with both of them. Because it seems like the the um, contrasts that I wanted were got a little bit too extreme for me on this, on this particular outing. For development, I went for Xtol 1 plus nothing, Xtol stock, uh, I did that of two different reasons. One of them is I have a batch of Extol that I know is about to expire. I know it's getting old, so I want to use it. And the other one is that if I was going to use Extol 1 plus 1, I would probably have ended up with 17 minutes of development time and I just couldn't really get myself to go into 7 minutes of development this time. Uh, I could also have gone for a Rodinal stand, and I was thinking about that, but at the same time, I was a little bit curious how this film would work at proper box speed. Uh, and if I did a if I did Rodinal stand development, I wouldn't really see that. Uh, then I would just get whatever is on the roll, uh, and I was curious on how this would deal with night time. I also did some experimentation with reciprocity or Schwarzfeld effect. Uh, and it seems like I couldn't find any indication online or any guide online to how to deal with the reciprocity on this film, probably because no one has ever shot in the dark before uh, or they just know that that wouldn't work probably pretty well. Uh, but what I found out is that, if you, uh, it, as it seems on the negatives, when the meter gives you one second, you should shoot two. When a meter gives you two seconds, you should shoot four. And I also got the meter telling me to shoot at four at once, and I should probably have gone for 12. But I didn't have 12. Uh, I only had up to eight seconds on the, um, uh, on the Bronica. And I didn't have a timed exposure mode, so I couldn't do it myself. Uh, that would probably have been the best choice. Um, but at the same time, the 8 second doesn't look too bad. So I'm, I'm looking forward to showing you my images or my results. Uh, I think they are acceptable, but they, uh, these negatives are certainly not printable in a dark room.